Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode 214 of Ask Dave. Today we're going to talk about the Radioddity GD73 radio. An interesting little radio. It's, as you can tell, not got much on the front panel and uh, it's got uh, an integral antenna that's uh, non-detachable. Um, kind of an interesting, it's DMR radio. So uh, we're going to talk about it and I'm going to give you a little bit of a demonstration of uh, downloading the drivers and, and the excellent, outstanding extended user manual and uh, the customer programming software all on one video. So let's get started. This is a 70 centimeter radio only. It's, uh, that means the 440 uh, megahertz band. It is not operate on two meters. Now this is both analog and DMR. Uh, the DMR is full tier two, so you can operate this with uh, repeaters and you can choose your time slots and all those things like that. Um, now, there are no knobs at all on this radio. It's about as simple as you can get and still be a DMR radio. Um, even the on-off switch uh, is a button on this thing. The volume buttons are on the side. There's a push to talk uh, over here. Um, this reminds me a little bit of Radioddity's GD77S, which also has uh, no buttons. Um, there's no keypad except the usual DMR control keys, you know, the menu, the up, down, the P1, the P2, uh, the escape the, for the menu. You can get into lots of menus here, but one thing you cannot do is put in a frequency from the front panel. Okay, um, now the, the fact that there's no keyboard on here means you need the customer programming software to put in a new frequency. Uh, this may be a problem for some uh, AREs, that's Amateur Radio Emergency Service um, operations, because one of the things they like to train their people in is uh, on the fly, entering a new repeater uh, into their radio through the keypad, which is something you might need to do in emergencies if somebody sets up a temporary repeater or something like that can't do that with this. You need the customer programming software. Of course, if you have your laptop with you, you can make the changes easily. Um, so th this um, radio is an interesting little thing. I'm having a little trouble figuring out just exactly what market they're going after for this. Um, the microphone and headphone connector on this is um, a single eighth inch jack which is on top under a little waterproof seal. Um, the plug has four connectors as you can see here. The frequency range is 406.1 megahertz to 470 megahertz. So it's certified part 90. Uh, it will cover other services. Um, it will work on FRS, family radio service, um, which is all analog. Uh, but then what's the point of having a DMR radio if you're going to do that? Of course, you can do, if you, everybody has ham radio licenses, you can do similar simplex kinds of things uh, with this if you'd like. Um, it does not have commercial FM broadcast. It only has two watts of output, and that coupled with the built-in antenna really limits its range. Um, so because that antenna can't be removed and uh, I can't use my 10 element 440 megahertz beam to connect to the repeater up in Grand Junction, um, it has in fact the shape factor. It just looks like an FRS radio, uh, but uh, it isn't designed for that. Um, it seems very strange that that external antenna can't be used because, or another antenna can't be used. It severely limits the use case of the radio to simple walkie-talkies. It's hard to use mobile because you're transmitting only inside the car. You don't have an external antenna. Um, and you can't use it with a repeater unless you're close enough uh, that this little antenna with just two watts will do. Now, it does have a flashlight, which is uh, a good thing to have for emergency use. Uh, the battery does come off 
and there's tabs on the back here uh, for an external battery charger, but that's not what they give you to charge the batteries. They give you a USB micro cable and it charges from a USB source, in other words, five volts. They do give you a little uh, five volt thing you can plug into the wall and get five volts out and charge this with five volts. Of course, that means you can also plug it into any PC or uh, Mac or whatever and, and charge it from there too. So there's no reason to remove the removable battery. Um, the radio, in terms of DMR, does not import contacts. Um, you, it doesn't import anything really. Uh, you have to enter them and there are not a lot of spaces for them. This is pretty limited as far as a DMR radio. It reminds me of some of the very early radios that uh, uh, came out. The more recent radios like the Islands HD1 and the Anytone D878UV um, have enough provisions in there for um, memorizing every single contact in the world, every ham that has a DMR ID and so on. So when that comes up on the screen, it will tell you who it is, where they are, uh, all of this kind of thing. This will not do that. Um, now it definitely works with my hotspot. I have used it with my hotspot, my little open spot hotspot, which I have set right now to, to uh, talk group uh, TAC 310. Uh, which is uh, uh, supposedly U.S. wide. I, I, I hear a lot of Europeans on it, and it seems to be used as just kind of a central ham radio party line. Um, I can hear we've got a new repeater in the area over on Log Hill, and uh, I haven't worked it yet. Uh, I've tried from Montrose, but it just doesn't have the power to get there. Uh, it does come with a short user manual of the 5 volt power supply, the USB A2, which is a standard for a, a PC or Mac, uh, to a micro, USB micro, which uh, goes in the bottom uh, there. It comes with a belt clip and a combination headphone and a microphone. Now, to do downloads, um, uh, they just came out with a new firmware upgrade last night. So, I'm going to uh, show you how we would uh, download that and use it. Let's go to radioddity.com, okay, and we're going to download uh, the latest uh, firmware. You hover your mouse over support, and you get the different kind of radios that uh, Radioddity sells. We're going to go to the Radioddity, it's the house brand, okay. And we're going to go down here and pick the GD73AE. The A is uh, the American market and the E is the European market. Okay. Um, they do things a little bit different. Now here you see that the latest update package is version 1.03. Now when you get to it, it may be a later version. You don't have to do anything going back to the original. Everything you need is going to be in this so-called update package. Okay, so we're going to save that down here to uh, my downloads. Now let's show it in the folder, okay. And we have to um, unzip it, okay, so we do the extract all that's in Windows 10. We extract it and off it goes and here we are with the update package here. Now note what you've got You've got um, documentation, software upgrade, and the USB driver. You need to do them kind of in reverse order. The documentation has a German manual and an American manual. The uh, American manual, this one here, is worth printing on a color printer. It just goes on and on. It shows screens. It shows everything that you need to do. It is simply an outstanding uh, manual. So let's go now to the driver. Okay, the driver is here and we're going to um, see, I get this error that says prevented an unrecognized app from starting. So I'm gonna do more info. It's from an unknown publisher, well it's from Radioddity. We're gonna run it anyway. System policy has been modified to reject unsigned drivers. Oh, we're going to have to go through all that. Just go to Google 
and look for um, install unsigned drivers Windows 10. Okay, and you use the advanced boot. To do that, press Win plus X, navigate to shut down, and then Shift plus less click on the restart option. It's actually a little different from that. I have, you follow those general instructions. Uh, when the win key is the little Windows key on the keyboard and the uh, and then that plus X and then navigate to shut down and then shift left click on the restart option and it allows you to install an unsigned driver frankly Radiotity needs to sign their drivers we're going to upgrade the firmware before we tell it to write it we're going to come over here and we're going to uh, take the radio which is off we're going to hold down the push to talk button at the same time we press the on key and notice the little red light right there it is barely glowing but it is glowing so I'm going to plug this into the uh, computer and I'm going to plug this into the bottom of the radio. Okay, now we're running this as administrator. We have to browse again to find the stupid file. Radiotity, I hope you're taking notice. This is a royal pain. Um, bin. Okay, open right. There we go. Okay, we wrote it successfully. Now let's um, Go up to the software and plug in the most recent GD73. Okay, let's run that. Come on, Radiotity, sign your software. Let's get in with the program. Now, you can set the provided user manual aside. And then go find the extended user manual in the software, which is this right here. I would recommend printing it. It's uh, a lot of pages, and it is, so far, bar none, the best handheld user manual I have ever seen. Which seems a little bit at odds, because this is such an unusual little radio with limited use cases that they would put so much work into a, a completely brilliant user manual that's really well done. Uh, this covers not only the usual functions on here, and it does cover them by function, so you can follow along with all the different menu entries and so on, but it also has a pretty good description of the uh, software, the customer programming software. And it has an absolutely essential section on how to do the firmware update. Um, really, Radiotity needs to digitally sign their drivers, uh, you know, and I'm not going to buy It's Hard or It Requires Us to Purchase a Certificate. I'm not going to accept that as an excuse. It just needs to be signed. It does. It's modern technology, it can be done, it should be done. Uh, because then we can get these drivers in there easier. Um, better yet, it'd be best if it did not require any USB driver. It just went in like a typical USB device. Um, 
I hope that when you go to install the driver, you're not so unlucky. It is truly a USB driver. It is not a COM port in disguise. Okay, so you won't look for it under uh, COM ports or anything like that. Now, you should also install the new customer programming software from this same upgrade package so it's in sync with the firmware that's in the radio. It's very specific to the firmware. Now, the customer programming software, or CPS, uh, worked for me. It, it read and, and wrote the radio on the first try. Works pretty much like any DMR radio software. Um, but, you know, I've had some recent experience with some high-end DMR radios, the Islands HD1 and the Anytone D878UV, uh, that are full-featured DMR radios. Um, and frankly, what I'd recommend. Um, if you do that, you realize how really simple the software for this is. Uh, you can't import, you know, all the contacts in the world or anything like that. In fact, there's only a little page in there where you can put your handful of contacts, uh, talk groups and things like that, that are going to be in there. Uh, there is something that, that interests me in the firm or in the customer programming software. There is a developer mode. It requires a password. I'd love to get a hold of that password and see what's tucked inside the developer mode there. So this brings me to my question. What market is this radio aimed at? Um, it's really designed to be programmed and then given to someone who just uses it. It has only two watts and a very small antenna. Well, I guess that's a quarter wave on 70 centimeters. Um, but it's not really usable as a mobile radio. You can't really use it as a base radio. Um, you can't use it from very far away from a repeater. Um, I, I'm not sure what the use case must be. Uh, the price for this on the Radio Oddity website is $75, U.S. dollars. Now that seems high for a radio with no keypad. Now the Radio Oddity RD5R, which is made for them by Baofeng, is a radio I've reviewed before. It's a full-featured DMR radio, uh, kind of mid-range uh, radio in terms of its capabilities. It's a very nice radio. It has a full keypad. It's all nicely uh, programmable and it's five dollars less than this radio. So I don't get it. I really don't. Um, the fact that it's got such a good manual. Somebody put a huge amount of effort into this manual written in flawless English and with examples and every step that you need to do. When you spend that much money, that much work to put together a manual for a radio like this, you think, well, golly, you know, it, it must be something they're really going after the ham radio market. But then on the other hand, the radio itself is limited in its capability. Uh, so, I don't know, it goes back and forth. The form factor and no keyboard and the lack of an attachment point for an external antenna push this radio more at the market for FRS, which, by the way, the radio is capable of doing, but you can buy a pair of FRS radios for mo less money than this. Uh, and FRS is not DMR. In Europe, there's something called PMR, which can be used for family radio type things that they have over there, but this is DMR. Okay, um, I'm thinking maybe they made this for a subset of the public service market. And because it does DMR, they're also selling it to hams. Um, the customer programming software here, if it's, if it's not ham radio, the person who uses the radio is not the person who programs it. The person who programs it has all the capability to put it in there. And then the people, whether the police, fire, sheriff, whatever, 
um, just use those radios and everything is all pre-programmed for them. And in fact, uh, FCC uh, Part 90 requires that the radios not be programmable by the user, okay? Uh, for, this is outside the handbands. Inside the handbands, we are, as you know, the only radio service in the United States that has the privilege of programming our own radios and for that matter modifying them doing anything that we want with them so go figure anyway um, that is the radio there it is um, I look forward to uh, looking at other radios um, if you have a use case like a family where all the kids are hams or something like that you might find this useful um, otherwise, I think you probably want to go with the Radi Oddity um, RD5R um, or maybe just save and spend the money for the Islands HD1 or the Anytone D878UV. If you get the 878UV, make sure you get it from uh, Bridgecom in the United States because then you'll get excellent support. So there we have it. I would ask you please to subscribe. Uh, YouTube is telling me that uh, more than half of the people who view my videos are not subscribers. Please go ahead and subscribe. It doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't, um, I don't know, subscribing doesn't have cooties. I mean, what you're just telling YouTube is, hey, I like this channel, it's pretty good. If you actually want to be notified about uh, updates and so on, click the bell. Uh, then when you click the bell, that way when I put out a new video, you'll get a notification about that in your email or however you choose to be notified by YouTube. So it's been a pleasure chatting with you today. Uh, we'll see you for the Saturday live stream. Now don't forget to go to uh, dcastler.com support for all the ways that you can uh, help out the channel with uh, your financial support from if, if all you've got to provide is a single dollar you can do that in the tip jar up to as much as you want thanks a lot until we next meet 73